Okay, so now we have an annual target growth percentage to hit your end. You know, always begin with the end in mind. I love Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I always follow those principles. It's like begin with the end in mind. Where, what do you want to do in the end? How fast do you want to grow? Now we have the path. Then we got to start laying in all the bricks for the foundation. So we look at, I would look at their people, who their people are, what their experiences are. I always like to promote and grow people internally. So if people are, I'll say, shy on knowledge and experience, what do we have to do to get them that knowledge and experience? Or if there's nobody capable or willing to do it, usually it's more of a willing than capable, then we find somebody from outside to take that position. So if they need a, let's say, an experienced plant manager for a $50 million revenue facility, and their current plant manager has never worked in a place bigger than 10 million in revenue. Is that person capable of learning the processes and things you need to do to get it to 50 million? If not, we go find someone who's done it before and mm-hmm. you know hire that person. What are the some of the uh, core values that you look for or based on your experience? If the company uh, embraced this uh, top three core values, it's usually easier to mold people into those positions or have somebody from outside to come in and adopt. Uh, if they adopt these values, it makes it easier for everybody. What would well, you say like top ta- three? Table stakes is always integrity, right? Integrity. If you lie, you die. Don't lie or go work for a competitor because you'll help us if you go work for a competitor, if you have no integrity. If you want, we can help you fill out the resume for the competitor, right? <laughs> and give you the recommendations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other one is a big one that I always look for is like collaboration and teamwork, right? How well do they work with, like if I'm hiring a manager, how well do they work and manage the people below them? How well do they work with their counterparts and how well do they work with their VPs and owners and stuff like that. And they got to be able to do all of it and be collaboration. I always, whenever I had my facilities, I tried not to have like rank, rank and file, like this is the boss and that's the boss. It was like all of us. It was always, what do we need to do? Not what do I need to do as much as I can. Sometimes I would come in and I would have to like put the hammer down if they're going off course. Because you always know what the end goal is. So you stay on goal. And if you start going off course, just come on team, get back on course. But people who can work well together and aren't into like grandstanding. In other words, like it has to be their idea. I, and I'll give you an example. At a lot of facilities, I do a lot of Kaizen events. And Kaizen events are like week-long events. They spend Monday through Friday. You get a team of people, let's say nine people in a room and working in a plant. And they're fixing one specific area. So you got... Let's say this week you got a Kaizen team and you're working on line one and the objective is to get it to run 30% faster. And by Friday, this Kaizen team, usually by Friday, is going to have it running 30 to 40% faster than it was Monday in one week. Long hours, a lot of collaboration. It's never one person's idea. It is nine people just brainstorming and implementing stuff as fast as they can by the end of the week. And it's a, they're great, fantastic events. I facilitate them all the time. When I was running Vital Proteins, I had other people doing it for me because I didn't have the time to do it. 